Welcome to section 8.5D. All right, gentle people, we're going to continue our discussion about the problem that we've been talking about over the last two video lectures. We are titrating a weak acid with a strong base. And the parameters we've set up is that we have 25 mils of a one molar solution of acetic acid, and we're titrating with one molar NaOH. So what we discussed before was before the equivalence point, at the equivalence point, and now in this video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about is what happens after the equivalence point. So remember, our equivalence point is 25 mils of NaOH being added, and so after the equivalence point means that I have a volume greater than 25. So just like last time, I have made a table for you guys where you can see what the pH would be at a specific amount above the equivalence point. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna run through this problem and we're going to assume that we have added 30 mils of that one molar NaOH. So that means we are clearly above the equivalence point. Now, for after the equivalence point, this is only a one part problem. This is only a stoichiometric problem. And so that means we are just doing a surf table. So let's go ahead and run this surf table out. All right, gentle people, this is what we're gonna do. We have 25 mils of our original weak acid. And so remember, this is providing acetic acid. That's the major species it produces. I'm dumping in 30 mils of NaOH, and so it is going to provide the OH- minus for this reaction. So because we're doing a surf table, let's go ahead and calculate moles out. So again, the moles of acetic acid is still going to be the molarity times the volume. So in this case, 1.0 molar times that 25 milliliters or 0.25 liters. This is going to get me 0 0.025 moles. I'm gonna go calculate my OH minus amount. That's gonna be M times V. Again, this is gonna be based off my sodium hydroxide values. So let's go ahead and set up our surf table. My strongest acid plus my strongest base is going to give me a hard arrow because I have a strong entity in OH minus. So this is going to give me acetate plus H2O. So S, R, and F. So my acetic acid, 0.025 moles. My OH minus, 0 0.30 moles. I don't have any acetate at the start. And of course, this is going to be happy face down the line. So now I wanna go ahead and identify my limiting reagent. This time, my limiting reagent is not my strong base, OH minus. It is going to be my weak acid. I am past the equivalence point. And so this is going to go ahead and be minus 0 0.025, minus 0 0.025, plus 0 0.025. So I can go ahead and get my final amounts. My limiting reagent goes away. I have 0 0.005, and then I have 0 0.025 of my acetate. Now let's go ahead and see what I have left over after my surf table. What I have left over in my surf table is I have a strong base, and a weak base. Now, if I were to try to calculate pH, well, I'm just gonna worry about the strong thing. The weak thing is not gonna have as much impact as a strong entity. And so what I can do here is I can go straight to calculating OH minus and H plus concentrations. But the first thing I have to do is I have to calculate molarity. So again, remember this was in moles, I'm going to divide by volume to get molarity. Now my molarity is going to be the addition of my two volumes. So I'm going to divide everything by 55 milliliters. And if I go ahead and do that, 
if I take 0 0.005 and divide it by 0 0.055, I can get my molarity, which happens to be 0 0.0909. Now, this is my OH minus concentration. So again, I can go straight to taking the POH from here. So the POH is going to equal the negative log of my OH minus concentration. So I can put this value in. I get 1.041 as my POH. We know that pH equals 14 minus my POH. So 14 minus 1.041 gets me a pH of about 12.96. So again, gentle people, what you guys will see is I added 30 mils. I calculated that pH of 12.96. You guys are welcome to try this problem out using various different pHs. Make sure you use this method for things that are above the equivalence point. So anything on this graph should be a valid practice. Now, I want to go ahead and summarize things really quickly. I'll have a future slide with more concepts summarized, but I just want to do an intermediate summary. So what we did here is we titrated something that was weak with something that is strong. This can be broken up into three different scenarios. The first scenario is if we are before the equivalence point. If you are before the equivalence point, this is a two-part problem. The first thing you guys are going to do is you guys are going to do a surf table. And after you do your surf table, you're going to do an ice table. And when you do the ice table, you are going to use the equilibrium of your weak entity. Now, the second scenario is at the equivalence point. If we're at the equivalence point, we're still going to do that same surf table. We're still going to have an ice table. But instead of using the equilibrium of the weak substance, we're going to run our ice table on the conjugate of that weak substance. Then lastly, we went after the equivalence point. Now, after the equivalence point, this is only a one-part problem. You just have to do a surf table. So my suggestion to you guys is first figure out if you are doing a weak strong titration or if you're adding something weak to something strong. If that's the case, figure out what the equivalence point is and then you can use one of these three scenarios. Again, I'm going to have a major summary slide for you guys, but I hope this made sense and remember to stay safe, Chem1B.